Yeah, so today we'll discuss uh, transportation management master data. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, today probably we'll take up the first four topics and then uh, the rest will take up tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And then later on, we'll go to the resources. So, so far what we have done is uh, we have gone through the master data pertaining to the uh, customer pertaining to the carrier, pertaining to the material. So, so those those uh, information is <clears throat> what we have so far. But then, uh, what we need to now understand is from the logistics standpoint, from the transportation standpoint, what are all the items, what are all the elements which are necessary for transportation management master data to move the freight unit. That means to move the uh, product commodity uh, from the source location to the destination location. So what is the system, uh, master data system that we want to have? So, uh, so typically, if you just uh, look at this as a very layman uh, uh, understanding. So this is some sort of a diagram, typically, uh, you know, having all elements of transportation management into a uh, master data into it. So if you see that you have various zones in transportation management, a uh, master data. So there is something called some transportation zone will be there. Okay. So zones may overlap each other sometimes, right? So these are all certain zones. Okay. We will see what are all these things. And then there could be certain things like uh, some locations may be there. So there could be a source location and there could be a destination location. So like that, there could be a certain location and there could be some intermediary location in between these two, you know, source and destination locations. There could be some uh, location in between called uh, transshipment location. Uh, so that is also possible. There is some transshipment location. And of course, there is mode of transportation uh you know road basically and then you have a uh, means of transportation so means of transportation could be it could be a truck uh it could be a truck it could be uh you know any other means of transportation and then there could be like uh uh you know transportation unit there could be a container and things like that and uh there could be a calendar of course you should have calendar uh, you know, assigned uh, so that uh, uh, you know people work according to the time timelines, right? So there is something, some calendars, some lanes exist. Uh, carrier profiles will be there, so there will be some carrier profiles. This is carrier. Some carrier will be there, and carrier will have some carrier profile. That means you know what are all the services that carrier will provide and things like that. Uh, there will be uh, some lanes for which a carrier will operate. And uh, there'll be like, you know, this location could be like plant and shipping point, and this location could be a customer. So basically these are all certain elements. Uh, and then you could process these things, uh, you know, in the cockpit, of course, we'll see this separately. Um, so this is, these are certain elements of your transportation uh, master data, just to give a, very layman's understanding. So now we will see a typical example, probably how uh, how the elements of master uh, transportation master data uh, might get segregated. Okay. So if you see from a, uh, from one perspective, we are saying transportation zone. So here we said transportation zone like this. Right? No, we just marked some zones here at all. So here we are saying that you know this is the Florida state, state of Florida, and then that could be one transportation zone, uh, and we, we will come to the specifics later. This is just <clears throat> just to give a uh, uh, understanding of what it could be. So transportation zone, Florida. If Florida state is a transportation zone, then there could be multiple locations in it. So. The, there could be like, you know, uh, uh, you know, plant could be one location. So Jacksonville is somewhere here. So there could be some plant here and that could be one location. 
and uh, there could be certain other locations like uh, you know a distribution center so there are two distribution centers right so from this plant uh, probably the finished goods or so they are getting distributed to uh, you know tampa or uh, miami somewhere like somewhere here so this is probably the truck is taking all the way from tampa to uh, from jackson jacksonville to miami and then from jacksonville to maybe tampa and uh, uh, that's how uh, they are uh, serving as a distribution centers so they also could be locations right and then there are there's a customer so there's customer also uh, you know can be the location the customer's place can be the location right so um gay was this uh, uh st petersburg then uh, these are all certain uh, place different places uh, could be the very different different customers located at different places right so the customers could be a location so this could this could be one uh, understanding that uh, the transportation <coughs> zone may consist of several locations and transshipment locations and all that so that could be <coughs> one uh, understanding and that could encompass a transportation network okay so now uh, let us now go little specifics into what could a transportation network be so a transportation network is based on the following main elements so we got introduced to locations so locations could be plant distribution center customer and we'll see there are many other locations which are available in, in uh, transportation management we will see what they are so, so the transportation network will comprise of locations and uh, transshipment locations so basically a transshipment location is a place where they could be certain trans, uh, transportation support activities which might happen um, we will see what sort of support activities might be there uh, there could be certain um, like border crossing also could be transportation transshipment location or uh, you know change of uh, your containers or coupling and decoupling activities uh, you know things like that might also be a part of your your ports could be transshipment locations so on and so forth right and then there it, and then you would have a transportation lanes will be there so obviously uh, this could be one example of transportation lane right from plant to the customer so that is a transportation lane uh, and then transportation zones so zones as we have seen these are all the zones which can be logically uh, demarcated in terms of um, uh, better processing of uh, uh, the transportation activities so uh, zones could have uh, various locations within it and many um, you know uh, there could be um, different role. we'll see what are all the various locations which can be a part of it right so that becomes your transportation so that so summarizing it transportation network will comprise of say locations transshipment locations transportation lanes and transportation zone so these are the ones and uh, now let us look at the first one that is your locations now locations uh, as as we have uh, understood um, in typical uh, sap world uh, when we when we use uh, when we look at erp perspective right from erp standpoint master data uh, we when we uh, create our uh, you know customer master or things like that right so what we just confine ourselves to so the creation of plant customer vendor shipping point you know these are the things which we are not normally familiar with but uh, what about things which are related to transportation management so those are the ones which uh, earlier used to be created in transportation management system stand alone system so they are the ones uh, so what do we require in uh, transportation management system probably we will create the ones which are uh, not there in uh, you know uh, your mass data like for example port or airport or railway station hub gateway <clears throat> so these are the things which are created in 
transportation management uh, standalone system. But then, right now, we have an uh, embedded system with us, correct? So in the embedded system, um, you know, we, we uh, and, and then the, the connection between ERP master data, ERP, VCC, and then transportation management is basically on a RFC uh, called core interface, right? There used to be a, uh, you know, core interface connect, which has a seamless interaction between both the systems. So from that standpoint, the TM standalone used to work. Right now, when we are talking about a stand, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, embedded system, okay? When you're talking about embedded system, we uh, we have all of these, uh, you know, located at one place. Uh, and we will see how they are located in one place and they are uh, automatically connected with your, uh, you, know, you know, ERP, okay? So we don't have to worry about uh, their interaction uh, this art. once you create locations, they are aligned with the ERP master data. That we will see that. And what is the importance of locations? So now, how do we understand these locations are? So basically, these locations are geo coded. That means you'll have the uh, you can maintain the longitude and latitude uh, details. So you can have an integration with the geographical GIS and all that stuff uh, uh, positioning system. So geocoded, we'll see in the system, you know, how they are geocoded and what, what sort of things uh, are maintained. And these locations are, uh, you know, can be assigned to a transportation zone. So they definitely, the, loca the locations are a part of uh, transportation zone. So that is one of their...